Like going into a, going good. into a new room, gotta have to introduce yourself. <laughs> having man, to having to bro. do the uh the quote of the day. The quote, oh, man, man. I be sitting there oh, like, be nervous, I, like I don't know how to read or something. I be like, uh, really? Mm -hmm. I be I be trying to like, look away from Franklin. I always hey, no, what about the <laughs> boy? That's the fun part now about being on the sideline. I can listen to like you the students. I'm just listening to people talking. I'm like, you couldn't draw inside some of the by page. Yeah, no, no, no. You gotta be quiet. Welcome back, everybody. Episode two of The Lion's Den. I'm your host, Aeneas Hawkins. I'm joined by my co-hosts, my guys, Nick Dawkins, Jerry Cross, and of course, our very first guest ever on The Lion's Den, yeah. Keandre Lambert-Smith. Yeah. Big play, Dre. Yeah. Big play, big Dre. Play, Dre. Made Little a couple something. big plays on Saturday. For sure. Yeah, Little sure. something. Little yeah, something. Sure. Let's get right into it, man. How are you feeling? Like, how are you feeling after that game? Uh, I'm feeling cool. I took it all in. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a lot of love, so... Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, everybody yeah. back home. It was a lot of love. But I feel like I made a little post and I feel like that can be, that kind of can get you like, get to your head a little bit. So I'm trying yeah. not to really let it get me nowhere. Cause like I keep telling everybody, I was just telling y'all, that was only one game. I'm mm -hmm. trying, I'm day trying day, to do that week by, every week. It's a it's a long season too. Yeah. Like yeah. you got a lot of people left to play. I'm gonna ask all three of y'all, 110,000 people, prime time opener back mm -hmm. in Beaver Stadium. What was that experience like for y'all? It was crazy bro. Like. It felt like whiteout for real. Like, it was wild. I ain't gonna lie. Like, it was crazy. Yeah, it was pretty close to the whiteout. And I keep telling everybody, it's kind of an out of body experience. Like, you can only, you you gotta go through it. You gotta come out the tunnel at mm -hmm. 7 30. Mm -hmm. It rock. Be ready to go. <laughs> like, I swear to God, that's the reason I came to Penn State, like, for that environment. Like, mm -hmm. unmatched. Dude, unmatched. man. I be feeling the most during pregame, like when you come mm -hmm. out. Yeah. That's the man. That's the toughest part when you come out to warm up, and you know, like so, like if they don't know when we walk out of a locker room and walk out of the tunnel pregame, they have the security people there, yeah. and they're like, blow yeah. the whistle, and like Stop it stops everyone. Like everybody. you walk through like a Feel little like celebrity. Yeah. They claim yeah. everybody. And the student section was already like packed by the time we was warming up. It's two hours before the game. Yeah. Man, that's like that's like you like you get crazy and then um we run out the tunnel, obviously, soak it all in. But once you get on the field, first snap, first hit, it's like, you know, it's yeah. just ball. You're back to business. I'd be mm -hmm. nervous though. Mm -hmm. Like I, you still I get be, nervous? Bro, I'd be nervous in practice. Like I'd be nervous before competition. Like, I guess I'm just like a bubble gut type of guy. But like like nigga said, once that first play come, whether it's like the first catch, first blocking, once that first play hit, I'm like, all right. Like it's go time. You get back in that rhythm. It's yeah. routine at that Especially point. Especially if I get a catch early or something. One on ones though. What's your mind? Like what's going through your mind? One on one. Reds on one on ones. You know how it go. They call you out, Dre. You talking about pre practice? Yeah, yeah. competition. You know how it. Like, like what's your what's going through your mind? Like well, number one, I'm always going probably at the end. Yeah. So it's like, all right, man, I'm about to go with Kaylin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A couple years, before, all right, I'm about to go with Joey. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, especially if it's like nine nine. You know how many times I went last? I'm like, oh, I got to win. And Coach Franklin says it. He says it's a, a, a DB drill. I'll just be the, I'll be the one to admit that I don't agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah. I, no, no, no. Yeah. He says it's an offensive drill. Offensive he says it's a wide-out yeah. Oh, you don't agree bro. with that? Yeah, I, I don't agree with that, bro. I, I don't think, know about that, though. Bro, that's that that's favored in the DBs. Three routes. They know the route. They know exactly which route we running. And mind you, we can only release outside. Right, Like okay. That's what made it kind of wild. I'm yeah. like, yo, we can't do no other release. But I, I be kind of nervous, but I be ready. I'm confident, though. Yeah. I be ready to make a play, but I go against great guys. So if I lose the rep, I shake it off. I don't let it mess with me too much. That's the thing about playing at Penn State, man, especially now. You got Johnny Dixon, you got Day Day, yeah. Kalen King. You yeah, can get... you got guys. Man, yeah. talk about them young guys we got, too, man. We got a bunch of assassins, some young yes. cats in there, yeah. Yeah. cornerback and defense. Cam Miller. But we got young dudes everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's why that's that's why I'm excited to see just, like, we got, we got to talk about that perspective. Cause so for me now, I'm done, right? So yeah. like, Doc, you were a young guy when I got done. You was a young guy. I remember yeah. when y'all came in and like as the old head, when you take a step back and you see the young bulls mm -hmm. like start to come into their own, talk about what that's like. It's, it's different. Like I be, I see, I see myself in a lot of young guys, like uh, whether it's like mad that they're not getting the, the same attention as the older heads or somebody, <laughs> I'm just like, bro, it's levels. Like you got to do your time there. You got to work your way up. But I've been there, and uh, Fat Man, I would say Fat Man remind, remind me a lot of myself, honestly, from the same city. That same aggression, that same, just how he act, how he, how, well, he, how he be in practice. I was kind of like that, just like the mental side of it. But come with time, experience, all that's going to get clean. 
Dog. I was thinking, I was thinking today we were watching some of our old um, D Squad Plus scrimmages. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm like, thank God that some of these cats didn't come in when I came in. I wouldn't be playing like, <laughs> wow. we, we, bro, Vanga, um, Drew Shelton, Don Ruley. Man, them cats are good. I was not coming in that develop. Like yeah, when I first ready came to in go. our class, we was watching it like, oh, look at Olu. We're, me and Olu in the dirt, like in the dirty <laughs> show, taking all the reps. Olu was in the dirty show? Man, freshman year, man, me and Olu, man, me and Olu took, we took yep. 18 straight dirty show. Nah. <laughs> like, <laughs> we y'all took 18 used to, straight bro, dirty. Y'all used to kill me with the dirty show. I remember, bro. <laughs> what's that? What, what's that? That You did a theme, bro. Oh, but White Out Dirty bro, Show, White Out White Out Dirty. <laughs> dirty Pull show up in suits Bro, everybody, everybody, everybody T. Whoever playing in Dirty yo, we, Show, they yo, T. That was I'm like, the, the, the D squad, the, ta- the taxpayer bowl. The D, yeah, the D squad. The, 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 the taxpayer bowl. The D squad wide out uh, Super Bowl. That was, yeah. that, was, that was the most lit D squad game I ever played. Nah. That was electric. <laughs> you all had to jump You're in. You're different. I don't, do you remember, uh, so the one time we're in a Dirty Show, we're on like rep 23 in a row. Yeah. No water. <laughs> Bryce Effner. Shoves me after a play in my back. I don't know who it is. I just know yeah. I get shot. I can't see no more. I see Doc behind me <laughs> and just start throwing yeah, jabs. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm we like, find that clip for and I'm and normally like, you know me, like, you know me. <laughs> I'm, 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 yeah, yeah, he started punching immediately. Dude, we started throwing. Start, I'm sorry, but I'm, look, I'm 30 it, years old at D Squad scrimmage. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. bro, I got this young bull yeah, in here right? trying to show off. Bro, I'm in there. I'm in there. Is I'm. T- I just took like 24 straight. I'm gassed. I'm like, oh. Oh my gosh. And I getting jabbed in the back of the head. I'm like, yo, who is punching me right now? I turn around and talk, and I remember uh, one of the old heads that told me, like, yo, yo. if y'all start a fight, Franklin might end the dirty show. So I'm like, man, I'm gas. Yeah. Get out of this. I start trying to throw punches back. I'm like, yo, we gotta get out of here. We gotta get out of here. Backfired. Now I'm extra gas. We got, we got more reps. So that's the that's the vet hey. move, right? I didn't been in plenty of dirty shows at that point, right? So I'm oh like, my God. I know this is my last rep before Kazai Izzard comes yeah. in. So I'm like, hey, you had to explain to them what the dirty show is. So the dirty show, for those of you who don't know, oh is God. typically designated for young guys who aren't ready to play in the games yet. Okay, yeah. and it's like 95 percent of them are just young guys who will end up being players at Penn State. When you're in year three on the Dirty Show and you're a scholarship guy, <laughs> them is dark days. So I'm yeah. telling you, you in there playing against 18 year olds oh just because God. they need a body in there. Oh, you got a guy like Doc Olu Fashionu from the mm. time he came in at 18 was yeah. a matchup nightmare for me. It wasn't no, <laughs> it wasn't no, he didn't build up to being better than me. He walked in the, in the building wow. and took over. Oh my God, I'm not gonna make it through this podcast, bro. <laughs> These dudes. We're just in here trying to keep it real, man. Um, how was, well, Jerry, how was your, like, cause you really just got into D Squad yeah, Plus. Like, how, how does it feel like when you're out there on Dirty Show? No, like? it's, it's a different, like, it's different, bro. Uh-huh. Like, the intensity's up there, like, like, it's a Super Bowl for real, like, like, national, national championship, like, they trying to kill you out there for, it's a different breed, bro. The cats are trying to play. Guys are on when we do dirty like dirty show D Squad Plus, guys are out there trying to make plays, trying yeah. to get on the field, cause no one wants to be in full pads on a Sunday. Right, it's kinda no, like preseason. Know. Yes. Like you, they out there trying to earn a spot. Yes, like, yeah. no. Camp was a different breed though. Like everybody going all out. Like mm-hmm. it's yeah. just like that. For ain't Dre not lying, it's just like that, bro. Like yeah. man, it's intense, bro. When you're at a Penn State though, like, especially at this point with as much talent as on the team, like yeah. You really can't line up and not be locked in mm-hmm. with really anybody. Like I feel like that's something that people really don't understand though. Like, like everybody is good here. Like right. the threes is good. Mm-hmm. Like some of the fours is good. Like, I had to figure that out. Bro, everybody good mm-hmm. here, bro. Like that was frustrating for me though. Cause I was like, I'm so competitive. Like <laughs> I I'm, like I hate losing. So getting here, right. I still like I, I was still cooking. Like my first rep, it's funny, like <laughs> So when I first got here, like they let me know. They everybody already knew I talked a lot. Like since <laughs> you from did. winter you workout, did. like that's why that's why when I did my dance at the beginning, uh as soon as I got up there, I'm getting booed. Yeah. Like, I was one of them. I'm not even gonna I, I was, was definitely booed. Angry sure. old head. Yeah, what, yeah, hey, what, what did you do? Though? Yo, that's bro, I did something, bro. I'll tell you what it was like. I'm shy I'm though. Gorilla, <laughs> gorilla, yeah, gorilla, I played TV. <laughs> <gorilla. laughs> <That was horrible. laughs> he, he was pacing back and forth right there. I have my video. I'm like, he's about to tear it up, bro. I'm like, oh my God, it's about to no. go down. He did not tear it up. But that's all. the hold on, wait. Side note. I don't like, I don't like how Dog do that. You see how he said <laughs> he was booing too? As an offensive guy. <laughs> he on the offense. He's at your back. He's at your back, right? I don't get like defense. <laughs> yeah. Bro, the D-line, like, I give, I give the D-line props, bro. They they probably the most the tightest group. I move like, militant, definitely. man. Yeah, like move militant definitely. together. Not always in good ways, though. Nah, like, we don't need like they, yeah, yeah, I'll be playing too much. 
But like, if they got a guy that go up there and he's trash, they gonna steal. What you think they gonna do? They gonna cheer him on for sure. They gonna they gonna some King. King might get up and go dance with him. Right. Now, now what, everybody just tease. It's now a standard he, thing. Now he though. get a thumbs up. What's, right. what's the it's standard? His, thing? His what is the standard? Like offense, we have a different standard than defense. Like what's they that? can go do performances. I mean, I'll be honest, y'all are maniacs. Y'all right. like sick in the head. No, you guys specifically. Yeah. You know, it's just a thing of people <laughs> panic to Not talk to y'all because they're afraid of what the reaction may be. Right. Look at Jordan Vandenberg. Right, he's nah, insane. For sure. Nah, he's I saw nuts. a tweet one day. It was like Jordan Vandenberg is holding a hammer for some reason pregame. I saw like, guys that are crazy. Yeah. Now the offense, I think we're a lot more logical. Playbooks deeper. Yeah, okay. We have a standard for execution. So at the let, well, let's get to the core of what you're saying. You're saying you're smarter than us. I know. I, yeah, was, I didn't general, say it like that. I wouldn't yeah, frame yeah, it. I wouldn't yeah. frame it like that. I would just say we gotta like, know. We gotta know way more. Yes, you gotta though. be more logical. Yeah, exactly. Like, you gotta I'm be more logical. Like offense is way more difficult than defense, bro. Like I'm sick of people saying DB. That's just my opinion. We used like dude. We had offensive line. You let up. One sack, oh, you had a it's bad, a bad game. day. Right. You get one sack and get pancake all game. Right. It's like, you know what? He had a sack, though. Yeah. Like, it's, like, yeah. <laughs> right. it's also, you you're, that's the thing. You're on an island. Like, most people in the stands are not going to see if me as a one tech, I get double reached and the yeah. running back hit his head off the goal. They're not going to know. Mm-hmm. Everybody yeah. who knows football will. Yeah. yeah. But any, nobody else going to see it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the people in the stands don't know a lot about football. No, nah, they don't. They think they do, though. Like, yeah. they be It's crazy how much they think they know. They be in the stands, coach. Talking crazy. It's, that's the fun part now about being on the sideline. I can listen to like you the can students. Hear it. I'm just listening to people talking. I'm like, you couldn't draw inside some of the page. Yeah, no, no, no. You gotta be quiet. So what's the plus one linebacker, buddy? Do you know what that right, is? Right. Do you right. know who the ID is? Do you know what the why we ID'd him? Right. Who's the mic? <laughs> right. What are we talking about, man? Well, let's get let's get into the game a little bit. Obviously, you win 38-15 against WVU, who is you know, I got to give him credit. I felt like they were a gritty squad. Their quarterback did a lot to extend plays and do his best to keep his offense Shout in out it. To bro. Yeah, he, I mean, he played hard. Their running back yeah. ran the ball hard. Yeah. Um, obviously, man, four catches, 120 yards, two tutties. And let's not forget, in the offseason, on the outside looking in, it was like, who's going to step up at receiver? Is that room ready? And then on week one in prime time, you kind of quiet the noise. Talk to me about yeah. what those feelings were like when you did it. Nah, it was definitely, like I said, it was a great experience. Like, I'm grateful to be in that position. Uh, it's definitely, like, it's a, I'm not going to say it's a lot of pressure taken off me, but it does feel good. I, I, I'm not going to lie. Like, just feeling like that guy, uh, getting the love, people saying, like, okay, that's the number one receiver. Like, they found their guy, go-to guy. But I'm just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that and use it as, like, fuel. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm trying to be, like, a number one guy in the country. I'm trying to be mm-hmm. top in the country. Like, I feel like I'm finally in that position to get the opportunity that I've been waiting for. Uh, and I'm like, I'm going to make the most out of it. Like, like, I keep telling myself, in my mind, I'm trying to make up for the last three years. Because right. I don't feel like I really had the impact on the team and helped as much as I wanted to. I, I played my role. Uh, I was behind great receivers. Uh, I, had to, I had to learn that as well, coming in behind Han. Look, we, look what right. we're doing right now. Right. I'm behind... It's funny, I came in with Parker, mm-hmm. and it was kind of like a, a A, B situation. Like, all right, right he was A, I was B. It, but when he in the league, uh, they brought Mitch over. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I was behind a couple of guys, and I, I took – Yeah, all NFL guys. Yeah. Like, like so, real talent. Right. For sure. So um, I took those uh, experiences. I feel like someone was somewhat humbling because I've never been in that position. But uh, it was needed. And I, like I said, I learned a lot. But now, now I'm back in that mode where I feel like – I got that feeling like I had in high school, kind of. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I'm, I'm trying to, once I do it consistently, then right. I'm going to really have that, that, that juice back. Is that Kobe, uh, job's not finished. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We got more to do. We got mm-hmm. way more to do, man. It's nowhere near finished, like I keep telling everybody. But I'm going to take that game. I'm going to I'm a let, it, let it boost my confidence how it did and get back to the drawing board. Man, because that hunger is hard to find sometimes. Like for sure, and you you think it wouldn't be? We're at this level, all like all the facilities we have, everything we get into. But man, there's nothing worse than you have a, a string of bad practices or yeah, you yeah. just not competing at the level you want to. And you gotta really look at yourself in the mirror, like, man, I don't deserve this. I mean, I don't earn this. I didn't earn this. But yeah. when you get that hunger back, man, it's mm-hmm. a good fit. I remember, um, shoot, 2022, I came back to the crib. Uh, me and Hawk were chilling. I was watching Marquise Pouncey. Highlights. I'm like, man, I'm just visualizing everything. Mm-hmm. I'm, I mean, I think y'all are the same way when it comes to visualizing success. And I think everyone who's great knew or knows that they're going to be great. 
and just watching him him play, I'm like, man, I could really see myself in that role, like playing like how he plays. Mm -hmm. And that hunger is just hard to come by, man. Like you lose it, it's easy to lose, but hard to get back. In high school, we recruit, you're like, man, I gotta be the guy, I gotta be the man. Mm -hmm. And when you get here and you're like, man, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's That's not hard panning out. That was the yeah. biggest thing for me, bro. Like coming out of high school, like I let like my state, everybody knew who I was. I let everything. Mm -hmm. Like coming here to a stacked tight end room, I had to like, now I'm just waiting my turn, bro. Like, mm -hmm. and, like people don't really realize, bro. Like when you get to college football, bro, like it's a lot of adversity you gotta go through just to get to where you wanna yeah. go. Mm -hmm. like, just to get to where you wanna go, bro, you gotta go through you gotta go through all that ups and downs just to get to that spot, bro. Like I'm yeah. going through it right now, bro. Like it's a lot. It's just Dude, you lot, know dude, people don't even realize you know how hard it is to be a two? You know how hard yeah. it is to get on special teams <laughs> yeah, I do. Yes. At, at a Big Ten team? Like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, I, I, I won't compare no man. I do. <laughs> Bro, no cap. But that's no, real, man. though. Like, you know, you get to the college level, especially a Power Five at Penn State, like, yeah. everybody can play ball mm -hmm. in some way, shape, or fashion. And I see a lot of talented guys across the country. They got a lot of talent, but they don't know how to push through adversity. Nah. Or they don't know how to be consistent. No doubt. Mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest things, bro. Consistency, yeah. like on this level, you have to be consistent. Like you got to be consistent at something. Like I, mm. I see that in myself, honestly. Yeah. Like that's one thing I've been striving to try to do is just be consistent. Whether it's like getting breakfast every morning, mm -hmm. making sure I pray to God when I wake up every morning, like yeah. doing something on the yeah. schedule so I can just mm -hmm. build consistency. Yeah, because like you got to have consistent habits. Like you gotta. You gotta move like a pro before you even get to the NFL. Like that's how you know yep. you're really ready to even be on that level. Yeah. Like, and if, if you're still going day to day, just like no type plan. Like, yeah. You gotta have a plan. No routine. Gotta have routine. routine. Like, got, got oh yeah. And that's what I was gonna ask. Like for all y'all, my question is like, what is your edge? When you were a player, what was your edge? What did you know you did better than other people, or what's something that separated you from other people that you had as a, like a mentality standpoint? Like, like Hawk, like, what do you think separated you when you played? Like you knew you had it. Yeah, I mean, in high school, I was a I was a film junkie. Like, when I was really mm -hmm. at my best as a player, I was always in film. And I was like that at Penn State, but the body broke down. But the thing that I mm -hmm. knew I was going to do at a high level that was going to keep me on scholarship till I was ready to be done playing football mm -hmm. was I was going to do the little the details the right way. You was going to mm -hmm. see me in there stretching two hours before. He's going to yeah. see me in the tubs. He's going to see me in the locker room being positive. Like, mm -hmm. all those types of things mm -hmm. are relevant. I think about, like, uh, Jonathan Sutherland, yeah. who's with the Seahawks now, mm -hmm. like, he may not have had the most talents in the world with everybody on the team, mm -hmm. but he was gonna prepare like a madman. The most, yeah. the most consistent person I ever seen. He's a standard of consistency. Yeah. Him, him, and Juice. Yep, I yeah, got him Juice Scrubs. Him and Juice. Yeah. Props to Juice. Head. Look with her. Head. That's what I'm saying. Like, and that's yeah. what I realized. I'm like, all right. If I really think about it, everybody that I see in the training room the most. They all get Being paid. Being the most consistent, mm -hmm. they in the league. Right. Every, like, they all get benefited, paid. That benefited. That So when was that moment for you where you, I mean, because let's be real. You've always been a real talented guy. You did have some talent in front of you, and you pushed through that, and you kept getting better. But when did that switch hit where you're like, yo, I got to be that guy. And for me to get to that point, I got to be consistent. I got to be a vet and have a routine. Uh, after the Rose Bowl, when I, when I knew Parker was going to the league, Mitch was out, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's my, it's yeah. my show now. Mm -hmm. So... Like and and it sounds kind of messed up. Like I should have always carried it, like preparing as if I was about to try to go to the lead the mm -hmm. next year, or just always having the same mindset that I had. But it was like, all right, like I have to do all of this because like I cannot miss this opportunity. Yep. Like I've been, whatever you call it, complaining, crying, all these hard nights, all this depression. I've been waiting to be the number one guy, waiting for this opportunity. So if I don't do everything I can in my power to like. Mm -hmm. Try to be as consistent as possible, so I don't have no regrets. Mm -hmm. If I can't go back and just blame it on myself, I, I I just take that L. If I can't if I can't be consistent, I just when I look back on it, I can't be mad at nobody but myself. But like, I just I went out after the Rose Bowl. I'm like, yo, it's my room now. Like, mine's along with the with the other mega the other vets in the room. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I knew I knew the opportunity that was in front of me, and I'm like, man, I gotta capitalize. I got to. I feel like you two, like Jerry and Dre, like y'all had somewhat of like a bounce back season for this season. Like you, so Jerry coming off an injury and then you understanding the expectation of what's, what's to be expected from being the one receiver. What did y'all take as your offseason mentality? Like what shifted? What did you do differently to prepare this offseason? Bro, for me, bro, like just coming in and just missing all that time, like mm -hmm. I miss a lot of reps. Like I play spring ball, but like summer work after the summer workouts, but that was my last time actually actually been involved in everything. So mm -hmm. I, I sat out the whole season, sat through the Rose Bowl. I was finally able to come back. 
when I work out. Like, right now, I'm just still trying to catch up on it. Like, I was able to catch my body up through that mm -hmm. injury. I got stronger, changed my body around, mm -hmm. got faster. But now I just fight. It's just me getting as much reps as I can. So when my time do come out, I'm ready for it, and I can capitalize because mm -hmm. eventually it's my, you know, eventually I'm going to have to step up. So it's yeah. just, some, you know, something I'm working on. That's something yeah. Franklin always says. Like, you don't know when yeah. it's going to be mm -hmm. your time. And unfortunately, you see some kids – who the moment comes and it comes before they're ready or yeah. before they thought it would come and yeah. they're not ready. Yeah. And like you said, them opportunities aren't guaranteed. Not at all. And they're not always going to come back. One thing I want to circle back to that you mentioned, Dre, and one thing we do on this show specifically is like, you know, we want to peel the curtain back on life as a college athlete and a high level one beyond just what goes on in football. You mentioned mm -hmm. when you go through some of that adversity, I'm sure everybody in this room has felt it. Like you said, the mental health aspect of it, keeping yourself in one piece to get to that goal that you have, when you were faced with some of that adversity, what were some of the things that kept you pushing through it? I ain't gonna lie. I ain't, I don't wanna get too deep. Like, I don't, I ain't all sentimental. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but like, I'm like, man, I gotta, I gotta get to the next level. But I really got people I'm trying to take care of. Yeah. Right. So, it, it, that's really the only option. I'm like, man, I really had nights where I was depressed. Even before I knew I was depressed, like when I look back on, it, I'm right. like, yeah, that mm -hmm. had to be depression. Right, mm -hmm. grades dropping. I'm not, I'm not caring about stuff. Mm -hmm. Had to be. I got one goal. Like, I know everything that I've been through in my life. There's no way I'm about to get to college, get this close to my dream, mm -hmm. and like, Let it I chicken out. Like, yeah. oh, I can't mm -hmm. take it no more. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm built for hard times. Like, I've been through a lot. Uh, so I feel like I'm basically built for any situation. So, whether I feel like I'm I'm in a hole. Nobody up here care about. I'm far from home. It, it had to find a way, and uh, I feel like it's 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 kind of part trusting the process. Like yeah. that was something that I didn't really I'm not gonna say necessarily I didn't want to do, but I didn't kind I kind of didn't believe in trusting your process. Like mm -hmm. when I came here, my plan was come here. I felt like I had a chance to play early, which I played early. But I just didn't envision my years going like this. But I came here and did what I wanted to do. I said, I'm going to play early. And, uh, like, I want to be a guy. So when, when I get here and I feel like I'm not living up to my expectations or, like, never been in this position, yeah, it's definitely tough. It's definitely tough. But, like I said, it, it was only one goal, and I, I had to trust the process. And uh, that's kind of something. That's actually I was going to talk to the team about it. A uh, coach wanted me to mention that, like that process to the team, because mm -hmm. like the freshmen, they come in, they first home game, they see Lambert score two touchdowns, like oh he the guy, like mm -hmm. yeah, all this social media stuff. They don't know what it took. And they don't even, they don't even know yeah, what I've been no like. Clue. They don't even yeah, know man. that. But they about to find out. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Like, they don't understand, understand that this mm -hmm. is my first time actually feeling like that. Yeah. It's just y'all just now seeing it with me. Like mm -hmm. we both experienced this for the first time. Mm -hmm. Like. I feel it's, like you gotta though. go through that to get where you want to go, though. Like, yeah, that's like, why. I, I feel like those hard times is meant like it, that's making who you are. Like you gotta go through that mm -hmm. to get where you want to go. I say we all get to that point midway through the career where it's either you're playing to win or you're playing not to lose. Yeah, yep. you know yeah. what I mean. And you yeah. get conservative because you're like, man, I don't want to, I don't want to misstep here and mess up and lose my. Mm -hmm. But once you, I think once you adopt that mentality, like man, I don't. It's we only got so much time left, man. Yeah, like, bro. No matter, you don't know when your career's gonna end, man. Like you I'm don't sad. know when when this is all said and done. So when you get that mentality and adapt that mentality, like, man, I got to be it. I got to. Yeah, you have sure. no way. We always talk about the illusion of choice. Mm -hmm. There is no choice. You have to do it. Yeah. There's, no, there's no other way. You have to. Man, that's all the people that- I'm actually adapting right now, bro, is mm -hmm. like just the mentality aspect. Because when you change your mentality, bro, that can change your whole outlook on things, bro. Like, I don't know. I feel like that's something with like growth, though, as a, just a man. Like, yeah. your mentality, that, that'll take you further than anything. Mm -hmm. I kind, I kind of like. I agree with that saying it's growth, but yeah. I also like. It's kind of like like a lot of my friends. Mm -hmm. The only thing that separated us for real, like where they at and where I'm at, is my mindset. Like yeah. I always yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like since a kid. That's why I say it would be like weird of me to get this far and chicken out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Since a kid, I knew what I wanted. And I'm like, bro, you got it. And like, luckily, I was grateful enough to have my uncle being in the NFL. So I had yeah. when I got to that like. That teenage, I had some type figure to look up to him, like see how he's living and how he's doing the little stuff he did for me, seeing how he could take care of the family and buy my grandma a house and yep. buy all his siblings cars. I'm like, I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to like, mm -hmm. but it kind of it kind of almost backfired because I I kind of built a mindset that 
I had to get to the NFL. I couldn't be successful. Right. right. And that's why I kind of. It's, it's such an interesting perspective to me to hear you bring that up. For those of you who don't know, you tell them who your uncle is. Uh, Cam Chancellor. Cam, L-O-B, yeah. Mr. Mm-hmm. Nightmare Strong Cam. Safety will come like that. So hit you in your mouth. So <laughs> it's interesting because, you know, I've always known you as a supremely confident guy. Like, that's yeah. how you always came across. You were competitive and you backed it up with your work. But you were always confident. And mm-hmm. I come from a family of NFL players, too. Mm-hmm. I had the flip side. You're in a much better place than me where I got to a point. By 2019, I knew I wasn't going to play in the NFL. And it disappointed me to go through that realization and that pressure that you put on yourself. Do you yeah. feel like since you were young, although it was what you wanted, that NFL background with your family added some extra pressure to you? Oh, uh, yeah. Because – and I don't – like, it added pressure, but it's like I don't even feel it. Like, I don't pay – I don't pay no mind. Like, when I was younger, I didn't even realize, I was about to say, I didn't even realize how good Cam was, even when I was that young. Yeah. Like, when I was older and he retired, I was like, oh, my uncle was like one of them guys. So <laughs> I never even I never even let, like, the pressure of who my uncle was dictate how I, like, predicted mm-hmm. my future. But it does add a little bit. Like, he, he was in the NFL. Then his younger brother, my other uncle, he had a shot in the NFL. Kind of similar to your situation. It didn't work out. He had to get... uh back surgery, mm-hmm. so his career was cut short. A lot of teams didn't want to sign him. Um, so I uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> I know Dre has a short-term Short memory of a goldfish. <laughs> he's he's, 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 he's thinking about it, bro. Thinking I, about I, I it think about what I'm break. saying, yeah. and then I'll think about a situation <laughs> that happened or something like <laughs> So I'm deep into that. And then I'm like, all right, where were you going? And then I just can't. It's all right, man. I tell, I tell my, my girl be getting mad at me because I'll say I'm going to do something. I forget about it immediately. Yeah, <laughs> I got no short-term memory yeah, anymore. It's bad. But nah, yeah. Man, I say, to your point, though, the worst and best thing about college football is going home. Like, you know, we get off, you go home. Man. You're like three days at home. You're like, I need to get back. Yeah. yeah. And because you're home, man, all these people who don't understand the life we live, Bruh. what are you going to do this? What are you going to do that? Yeah, that's and, my biggest pet peeve, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Coming home is comp- like just having like all my family members ask me about, oh, football this, football this, football this, football this. Like, Not I even just family, though. Yeah, every, man, everyone. Yeah, yeah everybody's mm-hmm. asked that, like, bro. And they're the ones that put the real pressure on you. Because yeah. a lot of the time, mm-hmm. most of the pressure we put on is what we put on ourselves is self inflicted pressure. Mm-hmm. I have to do this, I have to do that. Yeah. And up here, you have the expectation and the standard to, to do something. But when you get home, and the people that you grind for, the people you love, or the people you've been around and grew up with and developed with, uh-huh. they're like, when are you going to do it? Why haven't you done it? Nah, literally. When are you going to do it? And that's the worst feeling. They don't really understand feeling. the process it takes. Like, mm-hmm. this stuff's not easy to do, bro. Nah. Like, this is difficult. But they think, bro. It's not easy. Like, <laughs> do you know how hard it is to score, like, a touchdown to get in the end zone? Bro, right? I, got a funny, I got a funny, clear story. So, just, so I'm on a game with my little brother. Yeah. And it was about sophomore year. I think mm-hmm. we had, we had, uh. Finished up some game, and I didn't like. I wasn't that guy. Like I ain't have, <laughs> mm-hmm. I ain't had no four catches, two touchdowns. Right. I ain't had no game like that. I probably had two catches, if that. Probably less than fifty yards. Mm-hmm. So, but I'm chilling. Like I'm on a game playing my little brother, <laughs> his little brother, and they in a party, and they like, <laughs> they like, I join the party and they just get quiet. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> and then his friend's like, Pat, your brother weak. Like, <laughs> That's real. It's like, funny now. They're like, bro, they little kids, though. Yeah. I'm like, you like, probably went to sleep. Had... You probably went to sleep that night, like, no, no, oh, oh yeah, yeah. right. Oh, that, no, that that touched me. It hits that, you. That touched my That's soul. That's what people don't realize when they say yeah. stuff like that. Like, you're pouring bro. your heart and soul into bro. this. Yeah, when they bro. said that, and I did, but I didn't let Kyron know. Like they said, and it was like, yeah, they had like 40 yards, <laughs> and Kyron. But this what this what got me though. My little brother, he just like, dang, Dre, you're not gonna say nothing. I'm like, yo, I'm like, I'm like, bro, I'm like why are you gassing him up? I'm like, why are you gassing that? Everyone be hyped about this NCAA football game dropping. Me, I'm stressed. My rating is not gonna be good. I'm concerned. Like, they're like, yo, what's going on? Oh, they dropped the NCAA. I'm like, give me some time. Let me get my rating up, dog. Let me at least get to a 70, bro. I'm gonna hurt my heart when I'm when that I'm six funny you said that. I was thinking the same yeah. thing. I'm like, yo, at least give me time after this year. Like, let me let me finish this year, then I'm satisfied. Whatever overall I get, I get. That's but after the last three, I can't. I'm gonna be like a 70. Man. If that, I'm like, nah. Mm. I ain't never playing a game. That's funny, man. Nah, it's definitely, uh, there were definitely times where, like, my mom, my sisters pull up to the game. 
I'm getting zero snaps. <laughs> I'm talking about no, my mom uh, drives mm. six and a half hours. <laughs> we all sit it outside. Everybody quiet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna say yo, Hawk. When you when are you about to play? Like uh-huh. y'all were up 36. What's the word? Why uh-huh. they throwing you in there? You know what I'm saying? But definitely some tough moments. With nah, that. my uncles, bro. Speaking of Cam and them, they were just <laughs> they came to uh, what game was it last year? Who who were our early games last year? Ohio, yeah. Ball State. Yeah. No, Purdue. Ball State 2021, brother. Was Ooh. that 2021? Yeah, Central Michigan. Yeah, Central Michigan. Central Michigan. I think it was Central Michigan. Okay. Yeah. So Cam and them, like they come deep, bro. It's like all all my uncles. They I'm like, yeah, like Central Michigan is gonna be a game. Like yeah. it's a snack game. <laughs> About to get like, off, right. <laughs> bro, I had no catch. Like <laughs> I had I was out there blocking. Like, I was blocking. Mm-hmm. And that's it, it got heated. Like, it was heated on the sideline with me and stuff. Uh-huh. I had to meet with Franklin and them after the <laughs> game. <laughs> it was bad. Like, I was not I was not going for it. So I get around my uncles, and they just, like, they know how to cheer me up. That's why I couldn't be mad at them because, like, they know I'm mad already. Right. Like, they know me. So when they see me, they probably like, oh, yeah, he's pissed. Mm-hmm. No cats. Like, we all here. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's pissed. So as soon as I get out there, they just start that blocking that, blocking what? <laughs> like, you what? They're just joking me. I'm like, <laughs> but it's, it's making me laugh, though. Right. It's like bringing me out that mood. Right. But I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, this is so embarrassing. Like, I'm like, I got everybody in the stands. Mm-hmm. And this supposed to be a stat game. Yeah. And I... Nothing. Right. Always, I, I was heated. But they got me out of the mood, and we had a nice night. But they were joking me. They gave me, they let me hear it. Get at you, man. I, I want to shift gears real quick. Uh, you know, obviously, everybody wants to talk about Drew Allen. They already were talking about Drew. Then he go out there, yeah. throw three tutties. He, he looked, I mean, he don't look pressured at all. He looks mm-hmm. like a smooth operator. Y'all clearly have a crazy connection already. What have you seen from him that's allowed y'all to have this connection and what can we expect from Drew in the future? Bruh, he's powerful. Like, he he can make every throw on the field. And literally. he can and he can do it literally. like it's nothing. Boys, like the, I didn't I didn't even understand how how sweet that that the touchdown pass to me uh-huh. was. Mm-hmm. I'm watching him. He just cut up, yep. step up, yeah. on the run, wow. then dime it. <laughs> and that was like a 40 yard, that was like a 40 yard rope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude, right here. I'm just like. When I watched that, I'm like, yo, I'm like, Drew crazy. Like, it, ever since he first got here, bro, like, yeah, we like early in rollies, we this is our first spring ball. Like, he rolling out through a sidearm passes for sixty Swear. yards, like, mm. and the spring game, just like, don't yeah. do that. Yeah, you know, like, it's a completion though. Uh huh. <laughs> he rolling. He talking, I said, it's, no, it's nobody in the mm. crowd. You still, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's nobody in the bro. crowd. Mm. I'm yeah. running the slant. I'm thinking like, he can't even see me. Like, it's a D lineman in his face. I see the ball come my way fast. Sad. When they say, you throw the ball, bro, if you don't catch that, your finger's going to be broke. Like, zip. Arm town's yeah. crazy. crazy. I remember it. when I was a senior, I had just got off of surgery. I was done with the training room, mm-hmm. and I had, like, a little hour window before, like, the practice started, and I was about to go home. Mm-hmm. And I came outside, and the trainer's like, yo, like, that young bull, like, they say he's going to be nice. I remember that. We was both we, out there so watching you, and we, yeah. Me and Doc sit on the bench. That's mm-hmm. crazy. I seen him. He a high school recruit. We just sitting there watching him. Like, yeah, this kid is a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I heard they said they told me the same thing in the indoor. Yep. Like, he was throwing with uh, years in them. It was, like, during the camp, and everybody mm-hmm. was just watching him. Yeah. I'm like, like who is like, him? Like, Drew yeah. Allen. Like, it's crazy. Like, I like him. He yeah. blew up crazy, bro. Like, I remember when he first committed to us, like, nobody really knew who he was. He was, like, a three-star like two weeks later, two four seven post him, go from like four K files to like thirty K. Yeah. Everybody started knowing about him. Like, this is crazy. Like yeah, Drew, and it's crazy. Like he's so quiet. Like he's so shy. Humble, bro. He's, like, humble. he's so to himself. Yeah, bro. Like yeah. I'm like, Drew about to get you to come out. He's like, nah. <laughs> but he's but, man, he he looks young in the face, mm-hmm. but his awareness, not just on the field, but his general situational awareness as a mm-hmm. man. Is way like way beyond his years. Yeah. He's a smart kid, man. And not just intelligent. He understands people. He knows how to read a room. Yep. And that's like that's where his poise, I think, comes from. Because his preparation and just him as his uh, maturity as a young man. Him and Zane, I mean, you remember they would come to our house when they were recruits. Yeah. When they be they took their official visits. Like yeah, we, we had Zane and Drew the one night, and I remember mm-hmm. being like, Man, these kids are 17 and they just seem like they get it. Like yeah. they just 
are locked in. You see both of them now as young dudes right. having crazy success. Mm-hmm. It's what not a coincidence. Yeah, like, yo, what do you want to do? They're like, we want to watch highlights. Yeah. We want we want to know what's going on. I mean, I think we literally went what? through everybody's high school highlights yeah. that night. Like we didn't even go anywhere. Critiquing, yeah. touch, talking to them, just uh-huh. just being just, you know, just I'm being boys, lie. man, just talking. I think on every OV. It's a point in the night where like everybody just get on the couch, watch YouTube, and start looking up everybody. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you got on to. my trigger. You I probably did that in, on every official visit. We did I that when somebody. I visited. Yes. I, yeah. every we, recruit, we look up everybody's yeah. highlights. You gotta know if you're right. You guys like as a college dude, like, yo, am I good? Like am I yeah, you exactly. gotta be all right, that dog. validation. <laughs> Man. Real talk. Let's let's get back to one thing you brought up earlier. You know, we got NIL now. That's what's making this show possible, right? Like you talk about your family and want the opportunity to put on for them and help them out. A lot of guys now have that opportunity to do that in maybe smaller ways than mm-hmm. what you would on an NFL contract, but still being able to help out and look out for people either back home or with family. Have you had any opportunities like that in these last couple of years of NIL? Uh, like specifically with money or just like anything, any anything, camps, uh, I mean, like camps, that, yeah, helping camps, the youth, anything like that. Being able so to I want to, I want to get on dog level. I haven't, I haven't thrown any camps back at the crib yet. But that's like that's something I plan to do, plan on doing. Like I want to, like that's something I always want. I want to help the community. I want to, like, help the the kids that I know. Like similar situations as me growing up, uh, come from where I come from, look like me, and they don't necessarily gotta look like me. But like I just want to help kids like in that environment. Mm-hmm. And uh, you lost your train. You lost your train. <laughs> don't you say that out loud, man. And I am. And I, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's my fourth year here, and my mom probably has been to like three games. Mm-hmm, like this mm-hmm. is her fourth one. But it's funny because every game she come to, I always score. Like I scored my first one, mm-hmm. uh, my first touchdown when she came to her first game, uh, Villanova. Mm-hmm. It was crazy, and I was like, yeah, I need my mom at every game. Mm-hmm. Like, I did, next game she came to, I didn't score last year though, so I'm like, all right. That's that. that's the thing with nil. People want to. You know, the headlines are always going to be XYZ player gets $200,000 yeah, deal. He's doing yeah. this and that. Half the battle is just, hey, like, we're trying to put money in our pockets so we can help our people and get them mm-hmm. to gain, like, little fundamental things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. I got to yeah. know why, where they be getting these headlines from, man. They talking about. Right. Like, man, they be making them up, up, bro. Yeah, they be like, <laughs> this kid got $5 million. One, well, how do you know that? Yeah. How do you know <laughs> Who that? Who told you that? Two, yeah, why, why does the world need to know that this 18-year-old kid just got that? Right. They trying to get you make a target on a college campus? There's no reason to even report that. That's ridiculous. Yeah. It's just like clipbait. Like, yeah. like YouTube, you see some crazy clipbait. Mm-hmm. Click the video. Uh, nothing. Nothing. Yeah, like nothing like what you think nothing. it is, man. I do not people think, man. People think kids are getting all this kind of money to do this and do that with it, man. Like at the end of the day, it's just taking care of the fam. What do you think? What is your biggest expense as a college student? Food. That's all people That's really, really spend their money on. That's yeah. Food. Yeah. Food and, and gas, probably. Yeah. Like food yeah. and gas. Yeah. That's it. My sister think I'm rich though. Yeah. Like, they, they, <laughs> they, they think I'm in the lead. Like mm-hmm. they don't even. I can't imagine when I'm actually. To that, like at that level, like yeah. uh, that's another real aspect oh of it, gosh. though. Like people make it, and then they Man. whole family, like they don't even have perspective on what it really means or how much money you really have. And sometimes you can get put into tough situations. and gotta yeah. tell people no. Yeah, so, like, you gotta take care of everybody, like you know. Right, and that's big with me, bro. Like I can't. I'm not gonna say. I'm not even gonna say. I used to be like, I can't say no. I can't say no. I've I, I've learned to say no. You got to. I'm like, mm. I'm got like, you. bro, no. Like, cause I'd rather say no than keep looking at my bank account and, and that don't get in. Dude. I'm like, yo, what the? I'm like, oh, no. Nah. Right. So I, I learned how to say no, but that's still something that I struggle with. Mm-hmm. Like, like mom. You can't say no to mama. Yeah, like, hard, like but right. luckily my mom does it. She tries to, cause I, I I try my best to explain all that to her. Mm-hmm. And like I say, having Cam in the family, that kind of, that was, that was, he was the first one with real money in the right. family. So yeah. like, Everybody kind of adapted to like that. Yeah, like you're not about to. And there's other ways you can put family on other than just giving them cash. Yeah, for like, sure. Yeah, I, I remember my pops. He played in the NFL, and his big thing. I mean, he would. He had no problem giving people money. He's yeah. he's the type mm-hmm. of cat. He'll he won't say no to anybody if he's got it. Mm-hmm. Andrew, my uncle, who played receiver in the NFL, he would help people out financially. But like for me specifically, the way he helped me wasn't cash. It was mm-hmm. hey, I'm gonna put you on this plane. You're gonna go to this camp. You're gonna talk to this coach. Yeah. You're gonna do this, and now. I have a college education for free, and that's how we got here. Mm-hmm. Like, there's other ways to help your people. But that's what Cam used to do. Like, Cam used to be, yeah, like, it was to a point. I remember one day I came back from uh, middle school. I walked in the crib, and there was six boxes of shoes on the table. Just all mine. Mm-hmm. It, it went from that 
to, and, um, mind you, my grades were probably, they were never bad, but they weren't all A's, B's. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then we get to a point, I'm making A's and B's, I'm like, yo, um, like, can you send me, can I, can I get these cleats? What would you need them for? Like, ask him 10 questions before he even. <laughs> like, I'm just playing like you're not rich and send yeah, these cleats. Like, yeah. <laughs> Who you playing with? I'm, like, I'm like, man, come on. Like, if, if he just don't say yeah, then nine times out of ten, you might not get it because he's gonna ask questions and it's gonna get to the point where you like, <laughs> like, all right, you, like, you be feeling bad answer the questions. Yeah, like, like, do yeah. I need these cleats? <laughs> like, if I, really if I tweet you right now, he make you start really <laughs> thinking about like, like, why do you want this? Like, right. Yeah. Hell, I, have to, uh, I used to ask for a certain shoe. Uh, which you want to wear? Cause everybody else want them. Like, yeah, you want them because everybody else got them. Yeah. I'm like, kind of like right. maybe like they popping right now. They hard, but it's valuable as a young guy to have yeah. somebody like check you when you're. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that that's what I'm saying. That that taught me how to. It, it taught me how to be. What's the word I'm looking for? Like. Grateful. Be grateful for your money. Mm-hmm. Like money don't grow on trees. My right. mom used to always say that. Yeah. Well, money don't grow on trees. We got and food at the I, house. Now right. I understand. Yeah, right. it. Like my sister, bro, she called me to ask me for a dollar one time. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, if it like, gets to that couch. point, right. yeah, <laughs> like go dig in the couch, get some quarters. You can walk What's around school on? and ask everybody for a dollar. <laughs> right. Ask twenty people, you probably get a dollar. Right. From somebody. Somebody gonna yeah. give you a dollar. So for her, when when it got to that point where she just called me to ask me for a dollar, I'm like, oh yeah, I say yeah too much. Right. I got I got to say no. Like, right. what? Like, Because you could enable people that way, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a fine line between mm-hmm. helping somebody win. Because even, I mean, as a college football, you're not above struggle. Everybody oh, goes no. through struggles. No. Money come and go. Things go up and down. But at a certain point, you got to help people help themselves at the same time and help them establish mm-hmm. some routine mm-hmm. and some structure around their lives, too. That's what I told, I told my, uh, my mom, my siblings. I'm like, what y'all want to do? Like, what's something y'all want to, like, mm-hmm. do? Like, I'll help you. When I, when I get to the position to really help, I'm not just going to keep giving you money. Like, yeah. I'm letting them know this now. It, that's going to be over with. I'm going to have my own family. I'm going to have bills, mm-hmm. taxes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's something else that I was about to yo. <laughs> The more money you get, I the forgot the about taxes. Hurt. taxes yeah. And the taxes oh. hurt. Yeah, like taxes. That, that's crazy. You can't can't escape it either. I think also, I mean, for the most part, a lot of us college athletes, but just this group right here comes from a background of strong women. Mm-hmm. I would say yeah. we were mostly raised by our moms or our mm-hmm. aunts or, or some like a, a mother like figure in our lives. Yeah. And when you're raised by women, you want to provide for them. That's what instilled in you. You're the man of your house. And when you're the man of your house from a younger age, it even means more to you. So now all you want to do is provide for them. Like that's my, like nah, honestly, that's literally. my whole goal. All I want to do, <laughs> that's, all that's, all that's all I want to do. <laughs> like if I can take care of my family, dude, I don't care what happens to me. I'm saying it's crazy that, you put that. It's crazy mm-hmm. you said like that. Cause I never even thought about that. Mm-hmm. I never even thought about that. It's like I, maybe because I've been providing for so mm-hmm. long. Yeah. Like, but this is. I told my mom too. She was like, "Yo, you don't gotta worry about me when you, my man. You know, like, I'm gonna worry about like my right. mom. You're gonna be taken man. care of regardless. For sure. And this is the aspect people don't see. It's easy to cut on the TV. And see two touchdowns from Dre. It's easy to see Nick Dawkins pancake, whatever it may be. Like, but there's real deal struggle and adversity to overcome. And there's it's it's not about foot. It's not it's never been about football. Football is fun. It's something that's easy to love. But football is the tool to help elevate the family and the unit out mm-hmm. of some of that struggle for generation. Mm-hmm. For that's the goal. You want to yeah. change the circumstance that your family and your people are under. And it's not just football. It's, it's foundations. It's mm-hmm. nil. It's it's YouTube it's, and it's, all it's, those different things. Connections with people like you connect with so many people on the higher level at this level, bro. Like it's crazy. Like so, even if football don't work out, like you good. You got connections. Like that's mm-hmm. the good thing about Penn State. Like mm-hmm. we talked about last time, it's connections, people you know, and then the NFL is just a stepping stool to a higher level. You know what I'm saying? So for sure. I think what I realized about myself, I want to be like. I don't know if this is the best way to like phrase it, but like a connector of people. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, I want like great way. you want to be a bridge, like, bringing people together yeah. or like yeah. uplift people, mm-hmm. make people smile. Like mm-hmm. that's why the content, the uh, just like my personality. Like I mm-hmm. like bringing joy and like everybody I come a, like come in contact with. Like they let me know like your personality like it's huge. Yeah, mm-hmm. energy is infectious. Like you don't know how you don't know how long the staff been telling me the offense go as you go. That's why I'm mad when I'm not getting 10 targets 10 mm-hmm. minutes a game. I'm like, yo. <laughs> right. I'm but like, even, I want to be lit. I need to rock. Like, right. But even that statement, like they're saying, like, and I've seen guys like that on the defensive side of the ball where it's like, even aside from games, you come out to practice, 
and you're a guy that everybody's watching because they know you got a big personality yeah. mm-hmm. and your energy is down, yeah. you're pissy, you can bring mm-hmm. 25 yeah, well, people yeah. with you. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, it's, yo, you finally on, talk understand to me. what I said. Bro, I never, I've been explaining that to everybody, but yeah. I never heard nobody say it to me. Like, mm-hmm. I never felt like nobody understood that. I keep telling everybody, my personality is so big that if I'm not like that 24 mm-hmm. 7, oh, it's just like, oh, yeah, he something it. wrong with him. Like, yeah. He's not ready to practice, like, mm-hmm. anything. And they'll point it out, too. Yeah, and I can just mm-hmm. be chilling, though. Like, yeah, I can mm-hmm. just be. Yeah. It's the worst. When you when people, like, always around you, they want <sighs> you to be like, man, we always, you know, we in there laughing, yes. joking all the time. You having a bad day. Now all of a sudden it's like you can't have a bad yes, day. You right. can't like yo fix your attitude. You can't. Like, like, you, can't. you can't have a bad day, man. And it and it, and it sucks when it kind of correlates in a way because say during camp, if I'm coming out, I'm not feeling it for real. By the time it's the end of practice, we probably didn't have the best practice, especially as a wide out group. Not even mentioning the offense probably didn't play as good. And then you come out the next day, I'm yelling before the other uh, lines. Mm-hmm. I'm just joking with everybody, dapping, hitting all my handshakes with everybody. Now in the offense, we didn't have the best day of practice. Yo, right. Now the guys, and then my coach, he'll put me to the side and be like, w- w- what's the difference today? And I'm like, M- my mindset, my mm-hmm. energy. And he's like, every day. And I'm just like, sheesh. And it's kind of, I'm not going to say like it's a lot of pressure because it can be done. Like that's when I, That's why I say consistency because I'm working on that. Just being the same guy every day, because I know it only leads to good stuff. Like it only yep. lead to, good energy leads to like good mm-hmm. outcome. Like mm-hmm. if you're if you're thinking negative, you wake up negative, you are gonna have a shitty day. And like, that's like mm-hmm. the Angels football. <laughs> nah, really. If you, if you wake up, something something throw you off. You gotta find a way to to regain that peace or that focus. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy. Do you remember what Inky said? I don't remember what he said specifically. Uh, when he was like, he starts his day off with a checklist. Yeah. So nobody can mess up his yeah, piece. Building, building the framework for the uh-huh. game. Yeah. Like starting his day doing the mm-hmm. same thing. So all right, this is how I start my day. Boom, let's go. So if I if I start my day and I go out there and my tire blown, I started my day already. Like my day is set. My energy is set. Mm-hmm. Can't nothing. Can't nothing mess it up. But he mm-hmm. said, if you wake up and you just you just go about your day, you you might be on an emotional roller coaster. Yep. You know? And that's mm-hmm. that hit home with me because I'm like. And you never know how many people are following you too, man. Like yep. you have a lot of pool. So yeah. them, young, them young wide receivers and them wide receivers are pulling off you. You never know how many people are eating off your plate till you go for seconds. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when you're when you're doing having those days and like and, and you see your group I affected like by quote. it, it means much more. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like you like that. Quote. That dog is a walking dog quote. He does this every talking, episode. Dog, he, he talking. dog will motivate you to run through a brick wall, man. It don't matter what time <laughs> of day it is. I got a class with dog this semester. <laughs> Shout out oh Kristen my Thomas. god, Doc be making me feel bad. Oh. <laughs> he be all it, bro. Doc is the uh, epitome of consistency. Bro, he comes in class. I'm in the back every day. He get me to come to the front with him. Yep. And, and I and I don't even I don't even fight it. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Like, Got to do it, row. man. But come to answering questions, Doc probably goes four in a row. Mm-hmm. Like nobody else be. It's, what is it about nine of us? Yeah, it ain't even a big class. Yeah. So Doc in there just he giving all the, the right answers, and I'm just like. Ah. Like, you nah, feel like you're trying to show you nah, more. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> nah, nah. Like, if I didn't know Doc, then I would have thought that. Uh-huh. But this been him since day this one. This is who he is. Who? Bro, this remember who he when is. he first introduced himself and everybody in the mm-hmm. room laughed? No, how was that, bro? Because he was what like, what did he say? What did he say? Man, bro. Nah, so, <laughs> so everyone, everyone was introducing their dog, and they're like, <laughs> um, I'm uh, Terry. They were knocking on the you know you know first time. I'm Nick Dawkins. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Nick Dawkins. I dropped my voice Bruh. every day. Everybody. The whole room Bruh. of rock. <laughs> like, who the hell is that? Bruh, he couldn't even finish his name. I <laughs> said, oh, we're not man. calling you that. <laughs> we ain't calling you that. <laughs> oh, that's the best part. No, uh, that's, oh, bro. They don't even. That's why I'm like football. The, the, like, the general public don't even understand those little mm. moments like that. Like Locker going, into a, moments, going into a new room. Got to having to introduce yourself, man, having to having to bro. do the uh, the quote of the day. The quote, Even, oh man, God. I be sitting there bro, like, I, be nervous, I, like I don't know how to read or something. I be like, really, mm-hmm. I be I be trying to like, away from Franklin. I from always know hey, what about the, <laughs> what about the cadence, the bomb cadence, bro. Oh man, every time we oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> always going me to get the cadence in the in the uh, pump meeting. I'm, I'm on ten toes mm-hmm. now. Bro. Now I'm ready for it. I don't Not care. Yeah. He can ask me what my name is. I'm gonna give him the cadence probably. Yeah. <laughs> The most the most nervous I ever was at Penn State football was as a freshman when you got to go up and dance. And that's what I, was, that's yeah. what I was thinking of. Bro. It ain't yeah, nothing yeah. more nerve wracking than that, bro. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially if you a guy. There's some cats who just like 
can dance. Like Devon Elise or like yes, whoever. Like you go up Tyler there. Warren. It's a performance. Tyler Warren is Tyler the best Warren has the he has the, the number one like I all him? time. All, yeah, who all else time. is on that all list? Time. All time. You got him. You got uh I like Zion. Uh, Zion Tracy, bro. Uh, he had a I'm not gonna lie, if we're talking all time, I'm not putting nobody who nope. went this year. No, nah, I can't. I yeah, mean, if they weren't like they were in that so conversation. Who your top five list. You time. weren't here, but I'm trying to whisper, bro. Tall, uh, the end. Uh, Norval, Norval. No, Mustella. Bryce. Mustella. Yeah. Mustella came out Mustella, like Michael Jackson. This was during COVID. Because yeah. yeah. we wasn't in the football buildings. Bro. We was in Hulu. We had to spread out. <laughs> we like, he like, Bryce Mustella. Y'all know how Frank could do the intro. We like. From the main streets. We, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, we, 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 Michigan. I, I'm looking around trying to find him. Because everybody, normally everybody yeah. just standing up yeah. front. Listen, and Bryce. We like, where, where, where you at? Go ahead. Tell him. And, and. Like, I, somehow the attention gets drawn to the back of the indoor. Everybody oh. just look. Bruh, if, like, if I can stand up, like, he was just posing. He had a hat on. Dude, had a he had a leopard print on. jacket on. Glasses. He, huh? he, he had a whole thing on. Yeah, he had a costume Dog. on. I don't, I don't even know how he received it. intel that he was going that day. I think he just had it on. Bruh. I think he was just wearing it. He was waiting. No, that he was, was one of the guys dude. who was waiting to go. Like, yeah, he was waiting. A lot of guys were nervous, ducking. For, he he not ducking, no work. He know what he's gifted with. we turned. He was just posing like this, had his shades on. Then he just started like prancing like these long, uh, yeah. long skips yeah. all the way over us. All the way up. Just started getting to it. Now that was a great performance. Started I got Drew Hartlob up there, top five. You weren't here with Drew. Do do? Listen. Talk to me nice. Oh, no, yeah. just, it's different because y'all have a nostalgia. Like, we didn't know him like how y'all knew right. him. Right. No, that's so the thing. So when he came out, y'all so, probably, Like, he probably, we were watching it when he was doing it for like the 10th time. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So it was different. Yeah. Listen, when Hartlob went up there, so I got there a year after Heart Lob. So he mm. did it once and then didn't do it again. Yeah. So I'm sitting there. Let's be honest. Heart Lob's like 5'9", 140 pounds, soaking wet. <laughs> yeah. He real quiet. He quiet, don't talk. mute. Mm. Listen, they call Heart Lob up. I'm like, what's he finna do? They play that little Uzi, talk to me nice. Yeah. He's that's dancing the hand bob and everybody. Listen, no, listen, <laughs> man. Electric. Nah, that's what I will give him. Like, he did turn it up, though. Like, <laughs> no, he would turn it up. But I will. Sure. I feel like it's, it's half and half. That song, That's that was a turn. Like, he chose the perfect was, song. He did. Like, Wait, talk to me nice. Yeah. <laughs> and then he going to, uh, side to side from offense to defense. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Performing, it was a man. lot of hip <laughs> Yeah, but that it, once you do it successfully, once you go up there and dance in front of the team successfully, oh, yeah, it's over. it feels like you were part of the team. Like, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, okay, like these guys, they rock with me. Mm -hmm. Like, we're good. Even when I was, when I when I did mine, like I smacked with the PB&J. And, uh, <laughs> and we started the press with, right. bro. I got, that's why I say <laughs> they were waiting. Like, since I got here, I've been the, what you, what you call it? I've been the, uh. Not the bad guy, but like <laughs> Yo, <laughs> the villain, the super villain. Yeah, yeah, the super villain. villain. Yeah. Ever since I got here, I've been the super villain. As far as like the locker room, because uh, like yeah. trash talking. That's what that's what I was about to get to. Uh -huh. And it's kind of off subject, but I was about to talk about me and Joey how we. Oh no, let's oh, let's bro. talk about that because I was just telling somebody today they were asking like who are your top trash talkers, and I literally told them Dre's on that list mm -hmm. and Joey Porter Jr. is on that list. Bro. So let's talk about that matchup, bro. Before I even took a rep. In college, like, <laughs> like I was talking trash in winter workouts, <laughs> and like, he he was a guy. They were like, yeah, like Joe, yeah, all he do is talk blah blah. Well, I'm like, all right, he met the right one. Like, <laughs> like let's do it. Like, I'm a, I'm gonna talk regardless, and it's not even just like that's I know my game. Like, mm -hmm. especially don't let me get going. If, uh -huh. if you start it, oh, I'm about to get going. Right. And then mm -hmm. if I make a play, oh, I'm on your head. So we just watching. Like, we're in study hall. We watching each other film. Like. Putting up huddle, man. You trash. Like <laughs> I'm like, bro. Spring ball start next week. Like blah blah. You my first rep. Now nah, listen. Don't be mad, Joey. Now he was my first rep. One on one. Go out there. I ain't even gonna fake it. I was nervous. Okay. I'm like, I'm like this. And this is a guy that this was after his red shirt year. Yeah. He was supposed to be that. Like Joey was never a clown. He was always. Yeah, he like, was always like that. He was coming in like they was like uh, he was kept getting shout outs at, at, at little meetings and practice. Mm -hmm. Frank is like a guy who has really stepped up and improved, like mm -hmm. Joey Porter. So I'm like, yeah, he's about to have a year for us this year. So <laughs> he had a surgical, I'm like, co surgical COVID. Yeah, like, he was in the lab during Bruh, COVID. Yeah, he was. It was a point. He was the only DB practicing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. everybody had COVID or were sick. Mm -hmm. Bruh, he was going back and forth. From side everybody. to side. That's mm -hmm. crazy. And he he was strapping. Like, <laughs> he won't strap at me. Okay. But he was strapping. Right. Okay, we're going to get so, that. We're going to find out when he so, see the clip. And let, he know. He know, bro. <laughs> Joey, Joey's delusional. That's what I'm saying. He's like, a little crazy. Bro, D, I ain't going to say Joey. DBs are delusional. 
Yeah. Never think they lose. But anyway, so we in we in <laughs> study hall, like watching film, like we're talking trash. I'm like, bro, we get out there finally. I'm like, all right, like today's the day. Like, <laughs> I'm about to see if I'm ready for college football. Like, mm. bro, I put so much weight on that rep. Uh, I'm like, I have to win this. Like, we've been talking for been months. Talking too long. Right. Waiting for spring ball. First day with uh, helmet, spiders. Bro, I had a post curl. I'm like, oh, perfect route. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> double moves. Like, you all, yeah. you got to win double moves. Get, get into my release. And one thing about Joey, bro, he's so, his arm length is, is, is out of the roof. And that DB, bro, being a tall corner, yeah, you are that you a problem. So he come up to the line like fingertips on his toes. Like, <laughs> yep. like yeah. I'm like, y'all got no area. Like I got I no go space. Nowhere. I'm like, yo, I'm like, all right, bet. So I'm fresh out of high school. I'm like, yo, I go back. Uh, I give him a move, and I went on the inside. Now he long arms. He on my shoulder, but I'm just fighting the route. Give him the post. Uh, give him, give him eyes, and I just went back to the corner. I like to say I cooked them. Okay. Now, I cooked them. Okay. I you cooked them a little you, bit. Like, I worked them. Like, rep one. Rep like, one. Like, you my cooked first... them like you was cooking like That's spaghetti that... or like Hot Pockets. Like what kind of hot cooking pockets, was you doing? Noodles. You all specific. that. Noodles, all that. All that. All the so, seasoning. So, in my like, I needed that. Like that That confidence. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm ready for college. Like, I got boom, boom. And it was a hot ball. Went to go get it. Climbed the ladder. Right in front of Franklin mm-hmm. and Coach Stubbs. Oh yeah. So oh, like, yeah. Franklin like, great catch, yo. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know how Franklin is. He be so lit. <laughs> and, Stubbs, and Stubbs know how much uh, trash talking me and Joy been doing. So right. Stubbs over there lit, too. He uh-huh. like, yeah, oh, yeah. Stubbs used to talk as much but, as yeah, y'all did. Yo, Stubbs, yeah. Yo, we hit it when he hit um, <laughs> AJ with the, uh, at the condition test. Bro. Man, he, he failed the condition test. He's in there. He's like, ah, ah. He said, that's how you going to be looking after uh one on ones. You don't get up out of here. Just like him, though, bro. <laughs> bro. That's funny. So when I did that, I got up, Dap Franklin up. I'm like, oh yeah, like it's that time. <laughs> but when I looked at it on film, I'm like, bro, Joey tapping me in the air. Like <laughs> I'm talking about. He knew I was about to catch. Like you could tell it was one of them. God damn, like, like I'm about to get him. Like, uh-huh. Got me in the air, but I popped right up. Like I was lit. On my first rep, I'm like, oh, shit, first Joey, like. Yeah, it's about to be a breeze. No, I'm here like, now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they ain't ready for oh, me. Oh, college easy. <laughs> so that was, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give Joy his credit. Like now that now that he's gone, you can't you can't give him too much credit when they nah not when they in the house. Yeah, you, nah. Uh, but now that he's gone, oh, I I knew Joey was special um, because when he first got in, he was on the D squad freshman year. Yeah, and he just they kept challenging him, and they're like, listen, you are the singular most talented corner. That we probably had here in the modern era, like you got to start acting like it, grow up, like. And he obviously eventually did all that, but I remember one of the times I talking to this is like one of the first times I ever talking to him. He got beat on a rep, mm-hmm. somebody beat him, and he come back to the sideline. And you know me, I'm just like, I'm doing my best and having yeah. a good time. I'm vibing with my guys. I ain't worried about nothing. This young bull, I'm like, yo, you gonna get him next time. This dude turned and look at me. He's like. Shut up, Hawk, before I knock you out. And he keep walking. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, oh, he's a little, he a little pit bull. He got a little swag to him. Um, but nah, man. Nah, bro, Joey, bro, Joey used to, like, I ain't gonna lie, we had a lot of trash talking DBs, though. No. I don't know if it was that or if DBs I just in general bored. just talk, man. Or maybe, like, I don't know if I just bring something out of the guy. It's gotta be you. You initiate it. Yeah, I think I it's, no, 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 don't say it's that. You, I don't, I it, no, no, no. No, no, no. I'm not saying I never initiated, like, trash talking, but. You get under this Don't say it. You yeah. just get yeah. 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 No, that don't, that's not the same as initiated. Initiated means, no. Initiated means you start, you just start stuff. But your presence initiates it sometimes. You know, walk in the room, walk in the room. No, listen. Tone, no, like, listen. Uh, listen. You know what listen. I mean? I grew up with a petty mom, so I yeah. I know how to get. I know how to be petty. <laughs> uh, I know how to. I know how to say the right stuff uh, to get them. Like, I can right, say man. two words to somebody, they can be going, going, going. I say two things to them. Mm-hmm. Now they mad at me as if they weren't the ones just talking all the trash. <laughs> right. uh-huh. So you're just saying you're a better trash talker yes. because your mother was a little bit more petty. Yes, bro. Like okay. I, I know all the angles. You can get schemes. it there, quick. right? Like I didn't. Bro, when I first got here, it was me, Joey. Brizzy, I used to get on the Brizzy skin. Brizzy wanted, yeah. Brizzy ain't really paid me a lot of mind. Mm-hmm. Like, Brizzy was like, man, mm-hmm. young bull, like, shut <laughs> up. Like, it was one day, <laughs> my bad, Brizzy, cooked him. Okay. One on one, red zone, bro, I one handed it. And I'm like, bro, it was my first one hand. Mm-hmm. It was one on one, it was versus Brizzy. He had just changed his number to one. Yeah, I'm Brizzy like, was that guy. Yeah, I'm like, he's yeah. this guy. Mm-hmm. Went with him, bro, one hand. I get up, stare at him, <laughs> jog off. Bro, the next rep, <laughs> next rep, he's offsides. Like, I swear to God, he's this close to me. 
The ball don't even get snapped. I'm not even looking at the ball. I'm looking at him. I'm just worried about what he about to do. <laughs> he flinched at me. I jumped all the way back. <laughs> the ball ain't even get snapped. I'm just like, they like, oh, what are you doing? And then he comes up and he starts jamming me at mm-hmm. that point. Like, he like, oh, ball move. But I'm like, at this point, I'm thinking the rep just oh, we about to restart. Mm-hmm. He started jamming me. Like, I don't even get into the route. <laughs> and I'm just, I fix my, fix just my spider. Fight, right. mm-hmm. I'm like, all right. Like, <laughs> I gotta watch it. Watch what I say to certain people. Yeah. You, but I was I was arguing with everybody, man. Reek, Rizzy, yeah, Joey, obviously. Now, now it's Johnny. Johnny Dixon, man, <laughs> no doubt. That's Yo, what makes college football fun. Though. It is though, because it's funny. I just got a I got a picture with me and Johnny, and during the sidelines, the picture was I'm pretty sure it was when we were talking about like just how much we go at it in practice. And he like, he like, bro, we the best. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, that's why we go at it so hard in practice. Like that iron shop and iron thing, mm-hmm. but that's real. Like, so, like it probably be to a point, like a couple of freshmen, mm-hmm. they don't really know how I am. So like mm-hmm. they first time seeing me in camp, they probably really think I didn't like Johnny or didn't like Kaylin or <laughs> yeah. they probably really think I didn't like the guys who I was talking trash mm-hmm. to. But like mm-hmm. that's how I feel like gets everybody better. Like I'm about to talk to you crazy. So when you go with me, you ready to take my head off. So I'm, right. we really about to work. So everybody like, get better, man. Yeah, like some people get it. Some people we talk trash to them. Some, like some people just don't get it. But I'm going to be the same guy. Like, you got to be. <laughs> you got to be. It sets you apart. For sure. It definitely sets you apart. Well, I appreciate you joining the show. Always yeah. a pleasure. To our viewers, we appreciate you tuning in for episode yeah. two of The Lion's Den. Stay tuned for weekly episodes wherever you're listening to podcasts. Make sure to like, follow, subscribe. And continue to stay tuned as we continue on bringing the best athletes from Penn State football to share their experiences uh, in college. Leave some feedback, too. Leave some feedback. We want to know what y'all want to see, who you want us to bring on. We want to see. If this, hey, please say y'all want to see me again because I enjoy it. I enjoy coming up here. We'll get you on anytime. I hope this one do numbers. (laughs) I'm coming back. I'm spinning the block. Come on. (laughs) Appreciate y'all. For sure.